Hello and welcome to Boxer's Shorts. I'm Adam Boxer and I'm a science teacher trying to help you understand more of GCSE science. In these short videos, I will try and take difficult concepts from GCSE science, break them down, um, help you understand them, and then do some practice questions on those concepts. In terms of some general tips for using these videos, definitely do not have your phone on or anywhere around you. It's a distraction and it means you won't be able to concentrate properly. The same applies for other tabs on your computer. So don't have your social media tabs open on your computer or laptop. It will just distract you. I'm going to ask you to do some questions. If you don't actually do them, you won't actually learn anything. So make sure when I do ask you to do those questions, you do them. And finally, let me know in the comments if there is a topic that you want me to cover. Thanks for listening. And remember, you can subscribe and just let me know if there's something you want me to do for you. All right, so I promised in the previous video that I would um, spend a bit more time on this desk use business uh, and in terms of how I use it to solve equations. Uh, desk use was uh, designed by a colleague of mine and it's a really, really powerful method for solving any equation. If you are perfectly comfortable either with this method or with any other method for solving equations, that is absolutely fine. You can skip this video. Um, if you are not comfortable with that, then um, just listen into this video and it should try and help you a bit. The next few videos deal extensively with equations and if you're not comfortable with solving them, then you'll have a big problem. So if you take um, a question, uh, an equation like the one that we looked at last time, which is power times time equals energy. Now, sometimes you'll see that written as power equals energy energy over time and in reality all that is is that's just a rearrangement of this it's the same thing just the letters have been rearranged the reason why we have different forms of the equation is because it sort of depends on um, the question that we're asked how we use that equation me personally what I like to do is I like to memorize one form of the equation in this case p times dt equals e because to me that's the one that makes the most sense for reasons I explained in the last video um, if it's not the version that makes the most sense to you then that's absolutely fine memorize a different version it doesn't really matter now if your question gives you say a power of 800 watts and a time of 30 seconds this is really really easy to solve always 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 I encourage my students to write down DESC U and then S on the side there. The D stands for data and that just refers to the data that you've got in the question. The E stands for the equation which is the equation that you are going to use. So let's just do those two steps for a minute. So the data here is I've got a power of 800 watts and I've got a time of 30 seconds. Now I look at those and I think that's good and the units are all correct. So watts is what I want to see, seconds is what I want to see. So I'm very happy with that. My equation is P times T equals E. And that's the, that's the form of the equation that I know. And I know it off by heart and I don't need to do any rearrangement. I don't want to write any triangles with equations or formulae in them. Those are definitely not helpful to me. So this is just what I want to write down for the minute. Substitute step is where I combine these two. So S stands for substitute. Now, some people say that really you shouldn't do this. You should do it in a different order. That's fine. Um, technically, they're probably correct. But this way I found is what my students find most helpful in terms of actually solving the problem. So I've got power, which is 800. And I've got time, which is 30. And I've got E, which is unknown. So I'll just leave it as an E. C is to calculate which is literally just to resolve that, to work that out. So I can get my calculator, in this particular case, I, don't, I probably don't actually have to, but I'm going to use my calculator anyway, because I want to model to you that using the calculator is dead important. And I'm just going to put in 800 times 30 into my calculator, and I'm going to get 24000 equals E. U stands for units, and in this case, that will be joules. Now S stands for significant figures. 
we're not going to focus on this one too much right now at this point in the course because it sort of depends on whether you've learned about significant figures in maths um, and also there's been a change to AQA in the way that they assess significant figures so I'm not really going to stress out about it too much at the moment so I'm just going to leave the S for the minute and we're just going to have our equation laid out like this now the reason why this is good is a few things the first is that generally students find the hardest part of solving any equation is this and this step putting these two things together and figuring out how to meld the information from the question with an equation that sits in your head this uh, helps you kind of lay that out every single time it's really neat it's really tidy and it's very clear and it helps your thought the structure generally as you go down helps your thought as well it's very it helps you to clarify what's going on and also for an examiner it's really clear when the person's marking your work in the summer exams it's really clear to them what you've done and because you've laid it out so nicely what it means is that let's say you make a mistake in this line but you get this line and this line and this line correct you can still get some marks because they can see what you've done if you've got this whole massive mess of working all over the place they've got no idea what you've done you end up dropping some marks let us take another example let's say I've been given a time of two minutes and an energy of I don't know 240 joules my data T equals two minutes now I actually don't want this in minutes because the equation for um, power works in seconds so I want to change that straight off the bat into seconds this is not a video about how to explain uh, how to change units over I'll try and do that in a different video but for the minute I'm going to, I'm going to assume that you know that you just need to times that by 60 to get seconds and my energy equals 240 joules now again I need to write an equation which equation do I write the one that I know P times T equals E that's the one that I know that's what I'm gonna write down my substitute step here P I don't have so I'm just gonna write P T I do have times 120 equals uh, sorry equals 240 now like I said to you in the last video what should be really really clear and really really obvious to you is that this is the same as if P was say X right so I'm just gonna wall this off for a second P times 120 equals 240 looks stressful to you because you're like well what is P what's going on here but if that were X and I said to you X times 120 equals 240 you say all oh, right okay 120 X equals 240 I know how to solve that I've done that in maths many many times and different maths departments across the country will have different methods of solving it the one that we use is just really simply you divide both sides by 120 and you end up with x equals 240 divided by 120 which is just 2 you can solve that that's not scary that's not a problem at all not an issue so let's do that in our calculate step I'll put a p times 120 equals 240 I'll divide both sides by 120 and I'll get P equals 2 and my units I'll just write the P all the way over here so it's really clear where I've got that P from and then write the P again equals 2 W 2 watts very very easy very very straightforward let's try one more example Okay, final example. Let's say I've got a P equals 3.4 kilowatts and I've got an E equals 10,008 joules. Data. Well, that's essentially what I just wrote. So I'll just write P equals 3.4 kilowatts. Now, kilowatts is no good. I need to change that into watts. So that would be uh, 3,000. 400 watts and my E equals 10,008 joules equation P times T equals E 
substitute 3, 4, 0, 0 times t equals 10,008. I need to divide both sides by 3,400. And I get t equals, uh, I'm going to use my calculator for this one, 10,000, uh, sorry, there's an extra zero there. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I've got 10,008 divided by 3,400. Sorry, I confused myself there. And I've got a whole long number, 2.9435, etc. In the question, they'll ask you to give it to an appropriate number of decimal places or significant figures. Let's just assume for the minute we'll give it to two decimal places. 2.94 seconds and that's it that's done now i'm not going to give you more sorry the units should really have come in that step i'm not going to give you more practice on that now because in the, f the next videos coming up there's going to be an absolute ton of practice of questions like this but if you are concerned and you really want to have a go at that make sure you just go back to the last video where we did power uh, or the last video where we did efficiency and there are a bunch of practice questions there in which you'll have to do this calculate step where you divide through by both sides. A reminder as ever to subscribe to the channel to get more videos and if there's a particular topic you want me to have a go at just do let me know.